Hello and welcome to this edition of Viewpoint. Today we have with us Ed Manhart, who is the new director of the Retirees Community and Membership Services Department. Ed, thanks for being with us. Appreciate you stopping by Viewpoint. Well, thank you for having me today, Deirdre. It's an honor to be here, and, and of course, it's truly an honor to be able to serve in this position. Congratulations! You just start. Your start date was November first. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling very good about this. I'm learning quite a bit more, you know, as every day passes. And uh, I have to say that it's very interesting uh, because a lot of the things that I'm learning are every day, uh, everyday life uh, events and things that happen uh, that have been happening within my family. And so that's what makes it very interesting is, you know, one day I too will join the ranks of re retirees. Let's take a step back. Tell me your union story. When did you first become a member and out of what shop did you come? Well, I, I began uh, my career in uh, the aviation industry in, in uh, 1988. And I started with TWA as uh, I started off as a janitor, worked my way, uh, you know, into the door that way and became ramp service person. And I was going to school to get my aircraft power plant license. I got my, my licensing and I became a mechanic and I was an aircraft mechanic with Transworld Airlines. That was, uh, that was my company position and, you know, uh, other than aircraft maintenance and everything, I was totally involved with the union. Um, I was a shop steward, you know, for many years uh, and I worked in several positions within the lodge uh, as far as legislative chairperson with MNPL. Uh, I also served on the St. Louis Labor Council as delegate and then on the machinist uh, or, I'm sorry, the Missouri State Council of Machinists, and um, I worked a lot with the political uh, environment, uh, you know, from the local, you know, uh, you know, in, within the state up to the hill, and we did a, a lot of, I'd say, work with the company in a lot of ways, too, because we had a failing airline at the time, and, and we worked with the issues of the day for the industry and for our particular airline and the industry. So uh, we did have a, a, a fairly good amount of influence, uh, you know, in that with, in conjunction with what our legislative and political uh, department had here within the IAM. But now your department doesn't just deal with retirees. Tell me a little bit about the other services offered to the membership. Oh, sure, absolutely. We also have veterans under our department, under membership services. Uh, it's, it's a very, very nice program. And we reach out in, to the veterans. And the IAM, a lot of people don't know this, but the IAM has probably one of the highest concentrations of veterans for you know a, a union. And I recently attended an event uh, at the DOL just last week in as far as uh, this was a salute to the veterans. And aside from the salute to the veterans, they were outlining the services that they provide. And what we have here for our department is really an extension to that. And so while they have it, we have it too, and we have the ability to reach out into our membership to be able to show them what we have available for them. And so I'm really looking forward to letting them know that we're here for them. And so that would be for the veterans, and God bless them. If it weren't for the veterans, we would not be allowed to sit here today and have this conversation. We have a big year coming up next year, um, convention year. Um, you're new in the department. If you could guess, what do you hope the department becomes? What do you want to accomplish next year? So I would like to see the department going in that direction to make sure that we ensure the family unit is prepared for a lot of impending crisis issues, such as long-term care. Because we have 10,000 retirees per day going into uh, the retirement, well, let's just say, let me rephrase that. We have 10,000 workers per day joining the ranks of retirement. Within that, we're looking, that is going to continue for the next 19 to 20 years, because from 1944 to 1964, those are the baby boomer years. We've got to be ready for all of the impending issues that come along with that. We're going to have to face all of the 
issues that will become crisis issues impending right now, but will become crisis issues. Long-term care, lack of housing for seniors, the assisted living, the caregivers themselves. Uh, we're gonna have to look at medicine. We're gonna have to look at social security issues. Another point, if this uh, I, could be brought up and we have to educate people on is in social security, we have less people paying in due to the fact that we have less workers less employees in the workforce, then what we have is we have lower paying jobs. So when people talk about social security issues and they talk about funding issues and they talk about the two federal funds that, that uh, take care of social security and Medicare, what they have to realize is why there is a funding problem. It isn't because of mismanagement and all of the other rhetoric we hear. It's because of the fact that we have a lower amount of income going in due to the fact of job loss, due to the fact of lack of jobs. Because you are a department that is charged with taking care of our members and their families from kind of cradle to grave situation, are you excited about this opportunity? Absolutely, I'm totally enthused about this opportunity because all of these issues will be affecting me. I need to learn about them and I'm going to be able to learn all of this and be able to help everyone else have these to you know their availability. Well that's how we do it in the machine industry. We bring up the ones yes. behind us. So. Yes ma'am. Fantastic. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Well thank you for having me. I greatly appreciate it and as I said before it's truly an honor to have been you know chosen and, and to be trusted to take this you know into the next phase. So looking forward to it. That's it for this edition of Viewpoint. We'll see you next time.